Film Review, 1958. The Rising Stars, 1958. Six of them, starting with Elsa Martinelli, Italian actress. Anthony Perkins, only a few years away from his triumph in Psycho. Someone called Elvis Presley, just starting his film career. Juliette Greco, the French chanteuse, making a name for herself in movies. The Finnish ballerina and actress Tyna Elg. And here we have Sylvia Sims, rising young British actress who was making her name in films such as Woman in a Dressing Gown, No Trees in the Street and Bachelor of Hearts. A winsome young girl, pretty and openly honest in all that she did. And she continued that to a situation that we had. We were, using, we were watching television in 1960 on Saturday night. It was a show called Jukebox Jury. Sylvia was on the jury, picking the best records of the time. And uh, someone said, well, Sylvia, what have you been doing? So she said, oh, I've just um, been making a film called The Virgins of Rome. We sat transfixed at the table. Virgin was not a word that was ever used, certainly not at six o'clock on a Saturday night. Sylvia said, well, no one will see this film except children. She was wonderfully open, wonderfully, what would you say, anarchic. There was a weekly magazine called Picture Goer and she was interviewed by its editor and she said, I've never been on the cover of Picture Girl and burst into tears. And then, of course, the editor could see that she was rocking with laughter. She didn't care whether she was on the cover of Picture Goer wearing some scanty outfit. She was an actress. She wasn't just some pin-up girl. She, of course, changed a lot of people's minds about a very important subject in 1961 when she co-starred with Dirk Bogart in Victim playing his confused and conflicted wife. It was a tremendous performance and it certainly adds so much to the veracity of the film. That same year, she made a film about color prejudice called Flame in the Streets. In 1963, she played a young woman sharing an apartment with another young woman with whom she felt very strong feelings, which were probably lesbian feelings. And again, this was groundbreaking in 1963. She was going to play opposite Dirk Bogart again in The Servant, but she became pregnant, so Wendy Craig played it instead. Sylvia was really born just a little bit too early. She missed out really on some very meaty roles that were given to actresses in the mid to late 60s. I think <clears throat> she could have played Lara in Dr. Zhivago. She could have been Bathsheba in Far From the Madden Crowd. She could have been in Fahrenheit Force 51. There were so many roles she could have done, but she was just that little bit too old. And of course she had a family to consider at that time. So she didn't really burst into the great stardom that some of these other people did. However, she maintained a very steady pace on television, in some films, and on stage. In 1974, she received her third BAFTA nomination. Nomination, mind you, not, uh, not uh, winning the award. It was for a film called The Tamarind Seed, in which she played the wife of uh, a closeted gay man. So it was a return to victim, basically 10 years later, where she was a hard, ultra sophisticated society woman. Dressed by Christiane Dior, she looked fabulous and marvelous and well deserved that nomination. What makes the film extraordinary is that her role plays in parallel to the Julie Andrews story. So you've got Sylvia's story and then you've got Julie's story. Quite amazing that Julie Andrews allowed Sylvia really to take up so much screen time and to be so dynamic and so gorgeous and glorious. The film for which Sylvia is best known really is Ice Cold in Alex. It's played on television a great deal. It's magnificent. It just gets better and better every time you see it. And so I will just toast Sylvia with uh, some Heineken and wish her all the very best wherever she is. I'm going to see if I can take this in one gulp. I'm basically a teetotaler, so I'm really making a big sacrifice for you, Sylvia.
Thank you, Sylvia, for creating the one very important thing an artist can do is increasing our understanding of why we are, what we are, why we do what we do. You've opened up a lot of minds and a lot of hearts, Sylvia. So, cheers again.